Hello, and welcome to Microsoft Build. My name is Bill Huang. I'm a program manager here at the Azure Edge platform team at Microsoft. I'm excited today to talk to you all about a, about a new imaging and manufacturing tool called Edge Device Image Builder, which is in public preview today. Let's dive into an overview of the tool. What is Edge Device Image Builder, or EDIB for short? EDIB's product truth is to help device builder effectively build devices. This means different value pillars needs to come together. First, we have the fundamentals. These are what makes EDIB a viable product, starting with simple imaging solution for new and smaller device builders especially, trying to learn and apply the wide range of OS and OEM customizations can be a daunting task. EDIB provides wizard-like user experience, enabling user to start from a well-known device configuration as the baseline, and then pick and choose additional required configurations, all with a few simple clicks in the tool. We know that focusing on simple imaging experience isn't going to be able to meet the needs of the ecosystem at large. Device builders may have a complex product portfolio, requiring scripts to fully complete customization which runs at various points during the imaging lifecycle. Or device builders may have the need for imaging automation to scale out engineering and manufacturing process. For these, we have on the EDIB roadmap to enable OEM custom extension points, where users can bring in their custom scripts to run during imaging. EDIB has schema defined for users to author imaging recipes. This is the same schema that the wither UX used to save users' image recipe. So there is a single version of truth. We also plan to publish API for EDIB's backend for users to drive image building process in an automation system. Now, building on top of these fundamentals, we add value propositions such as Azure Cloud connectivity. EDIB offers a path to make devices that are born Azure ready by exposing Azure service value directly to device builders and OEMs at product development time and enabling pre-installation and configuration of Azure service endpoints, such as Azure IoT Edge for Linux on Windows. EDIB assists users with building secure devices and takes the guesswork out of configuring a secure image with recommended Windows security baseline, attack surface reduction rules, encryption and rest, application control, and Edge Secure Core image configuration. EDIB provides users with a competitive advantage in an ecosystem with ever-increasing demand for security as a value proposition. Next, let's take a look at the product vision. We are currently in phase one, which is a desktop tool that device builders can run on a technician PC. There is a quick screenshot of what this tool looks like on the right. We will take a deeper look at this in a demo coming up. With Device Builder front and center in the middle, we want EDIB to be a low overhead and low impact tool to pick up and use and integrate into existing Device Builder's engineering iteration, validation, and manufacturing process. We plan to open source EDIB. This will help us bring transparency and demystify the imaging and manufacturing process and enable the community and folks with expertise the opportunity to contribute and improve the story moving forward. On to phase two. This is likely a few years out. Our vision is for the same EDIB experience to be brought into Azure as a service, where it can enable new device builder to easily learn and experiment with Windows IoT and enable larger device builders to scale their product portfolio with automation CI-CD with Azure DevOps pipeline. Next, let's take a look at the developer experience. How would you use EDIB? To start, Windows IoT is a very versatile platform, enabling a wide range of device form factors, such as gas pumps, kiosks, industry machineries, medical devices, voting machines, and much, much more. To make all of these possible, there is a wide range of OS platform capabilities that device builders can choose and customize from. Now, this presents a set of challenges. How do we discover what capabilities are there? How do we customize it? And more importantly, how can we ensure device is correctly configured? 
EDIB's approach to this challenge is an image recipe. In short, the recipe describes what and how a device is configured. EDIB offers two experiences to define the image recipe. The first is a wizard-like graphical user interface for a user. So this is designed to be easy to learn and use for first-time device builders as it guides the user through the different configurations and capabilities available on the platform. EDIB also has context-sensitive help documentation built into the tool to help users quickly learn more about a given customizations or dive deep into a specific topic as needed. For more experienced end users or automation solutions, EDIB has plans to offer a schema where scripts and automation can be used to author the image recipe without the UI involved. The image recipe can be source controlled and used to prepare and iterate on images used in production and manufacturing environment and can be used for CI-CD pipelines to ingest customizations from multiple sources and produce deployable builds to drive test automation. Next, let's talk a little bit about how EDIB applies the concept of an image recipe throughout the device development lifecycle. The first step over here happens on the technician PC. We talked a little bit about how you would author an image recipe either through the UI inside of EDIB the tool itself or authored on top of the image recipe uh, schema. Once that is done, you have the full picture. You're, you have the full details of what needs to be customized um, and captured in there. Uh, to kick off the image build, you provide the necessary collaterals, such as the OS image, the feature on demand, demand image, and as well as the land pack image, um, and your own customization collaterals, such as the drivers and application binaries and your scripts, um, and as well as the assessment deployment kit that contains all of the toolings required to complete the image building process. Once you have all of those things gathered, and EDIB will help you uh, gather and validate to make sure things are ready, you pass everything on to EDIB, and you tell it, here's everything, go ahead and get started, and build me an image that is fully customized. This is where you're fully hands off. EDIB will start processing and translate your image recipe into a full range of customizations that needs to be completed either offline as seeing the OS image is not yet booted, or online, as seeing it needs to be complete, completed later in the image, uh, uh, image building process, and drive all of these um, uh, steps automated inside of a Hyper-V reference VM. So this is clean. That means every time you're starting to build an image, you're starting from a clean state. You also don't need to interact with a physical device until later when you need to get down into testing your, uh, your device. So EDIB will drive through the whole process and output a fully customized OS image, which you can also use EDIB to deploy it onto a uh, bootable USB key uh, and be later used on a physical device. The customized OS image contains now the fully completed offline task. This includes updates, feature on demand installations, language pack installations, product keys, uh, drivers, and as well as some of the app installations, just to name a few. It also contains the online completed tasks, including applying OS and security policies, installing unpacked Win32 applications, eFlow, as well as drivers, just to name a few as well. Once you have that bootable key, now you can bring it over into a physical device, plug it in, boot it up, and use that uh, USB key to deploy the image and complete some online tasks, for example, if you need to enable BitLocker um, for encryption and REST protection, this is where you can do it, and EDIB will help you do that as well. And then from there on, you could either reboot the device into audit mode to complete additional online customizations, or you can proceed from there to complete your engineering validation. Once everything is ready, you can capture the final image and put it into uh, production for manufacturing purpose. So how is this different than building an image today using EDIB? To summarize, EDIB offers a fast pass from imaging to deployment to testing to manufacturing. Combining guide rails, building to a tool, validations and kits and toolings, and templates to bootstrap image configuration, we believe EDIB can improve image efficacies by guiding users to configure and lock down their device correctly. 
This helps to minimize errors and unwanted system notifications on highly visible IoT devices in public spaces. Next, by completing the image build process in Hyper-V and outputting a deployable media, EDIB completes the image lifecycle without needing to initially work with a physical device. And it enables a faster to device testing time with the bootable WinPE image ready to go. Last but not least, this is done in a similar, straightforward way designed to put user front and centered. So with all of that overview is done on EDIB, let's go ahead and dive in and take a look at the tool itself in a demo. So here we have EDIB, the latest uh, version that's available on public preview, which is version 0.3.2 currently. We have on the UI over here on the left, the, the navigation pane on the left here shows the major categories and phases of the image building process, which is currently locked to a project because we, go, we don't currently have a project opened. Um, on the sub navigation panel here are the different steps within the major phases that you can interact with. And then here's the workspace corresponding to each of the steps. For this demo, we're going to show you how within just a few minutes, you can get started using EDIV to configure a recommended fully locked down IoT image and get started building that. So let's get started. Here we're going to create a new project. You see that this is under Windows IoT Enterprise LTSC. This is x64 and the processor architecture. And then we're going to choose an image template. The concept here is acting a, as a bootstrap starting point for a recommended set of configurations for a given device type. So in this case, we're going to be choosing the closed IoT device for a lockdown device. I'm going to name this my kiosk device and create a folder for it. The project folder contains everything for your project, including your image recipe, the logs that EDIB will create throughout the different steps inside of the image building process, as well as the intermediary building collaterals. We're going to click on Create New Project. And now this is where things started to open up, as you can see on the left, for the next phases of our image building process. But we'll briefly talk about the prerequisite page. So historically, to, before you even get started, there's a set of things that you need to get ready. And that can sometimes be a little um, complicated to figure it out. Uh, because as you can see over here, there are many things you need to get ready from, including making sure your host OS is in, uh, ready, the assessment deployment kits are ready, the OPK, uh, Packer, which is what's um, EDIB using the back end to drive the image automation, as well as some of the optional collaterals needs to get ready. Uh, historically, you would need to read up on documentations to figure out what these are. You need to go and find it, acquire it, and you need to also self-validate to make sure things are indeed of the right version and has not been corrupted, for example. Um, here, EDIB has this page, page dedicated to help you get ready. Um, and making sure things are of the right version. So for example, we'll check to see that the ADK versions are correct, making sure they're correctly installed. Uh, we'll also go one step further to make sure that the combination of the OPK ISOs, the LAN pack, and fault ISOs are of the correct version that are known when we onboard into EDIB because these are tested, supported, known configurations. And also, we'll go ahead and hash these ISOs and read off the MD5 hash as a sanity check to make sure that these ISOs are, are correct, has not been, for example, corrupted with. So once everything's ready, we can click on Next. This is the full set of customizations that you can go ahead and toggle and pick and choose to tailor to your device. But for, for the purpose of this demo, the only thing I'm going to change here is configuring the product key, which is going to be used to activate and install the device. Uh, we're going to use the default uh, test key for the 2021 LTSC, uh, Windows IoT LTSC. And that's it. That's the only thing I'm going to configure to get started. Validation checks to make sure that things that you define in your image recipe is correct. In this case, we're OK. It's passed. It only gave us a warning just to let us know, hey, we saw that you didn't include any driver customizations into the image. Um, you know, are you sure about that? It, if you're going to be running this image later on a physical device, you might want to consider including that. But we're OK for now. We're just going to go ahead and click on Next, Kiosk Image, and click on Build. That's it. I have told EDIB what my customizations are. 
because the template is of a lockdown uh, IoT uh, image, and that's the starting point, it already has the recommended customizations in it, and I'm done with my image customization and recipe, and I'm telling EDIB, feel free to get started and building the image, and it's taken over and start building the image. This, this process usually will take a little bit of time because what it needs to go through is um, translating the image recipe into what needs to be customized. It needs to process the collaterals, check to make sure collaterals are correct, and start doing and driving the individual customization steps. We are talking about a little bit earlier, uh, the offline customizations, installing updates, installing the required feature on demand, so language packs, etc. Uh, as well as then spinning it into a online reference VM on Hyper-V. Once it's ready, you'll see a VM show up here. Um, and then you don't have to touch that VM because EDIB will drive the VM to uh, boot up and install the OS image into that VM. It will also drive it to reboot into audit mode to, to complete the online customizations, like applying the OS and security policies, your un um, unpackaging 32 app installations. And then at the end of that, it will sysprep generalize the image so that it's portable and it will capture and output that image into what you specify over here, the, the kiosk image that will win. But while it's, while it's going through all of that, uh, we're going to go back to customize and show you and talk through a little bit, walk through a little bit of the different customizations that can be done. Starting with OS definition. So these categories are all about how OS is customized. Here is feature on demands that you can pick and choose from. Uh, for example, my device needs uh, SSH, but I don't need anything else. And in fact, the template starts with nothing cho chosen, and this is intentional because this can help save your disk space by the time the image is built. You're effectively telling EDIB, I only need those two feature on demands. Everything else I don't need. So what EDIB will end up doing is we'll take a look at the incoming OPK image, and if it has some feature on demand pre-installed in it, but you don't need it, EDIB will go in there to uninstall those feature on demand and in effect free up the space that were otherwise would have been taken by those feature on demand uh, packages. And so the resulting image will be smaller. Language and locale. If you're building images that need to be shipped to different locales in the world, this is important. Historically, trying to figure out um, how to properly configure language and locale can be complicated. Uh, EDIB takes the guesswork out of that. You only need to filter down into the image you, the language you need to choose from. For example, uh, I need French, and I need all of that. I don't need to figure it out how to install display language of French or the feature, uh, feature on demands, um, language feature on demands for France, uh, French. We only need to select it, and we can go ahead and get started. And EDIB will install that for you. And you can also configure at boot time, the first time this device boots, I need this to be displayed in French. I can just select all of that and pre-configure it, and it'll be ready to go. Quality update. If you have acquired a quality update package, you can apply that image building time to bring, for example, a RTM version of the OPK up to date to the latest version, so that the image that you build and deploy onto devices for testing and manufacturing purpose will be up to date. EDIB will also enable you to customize update policy. So in this case, we hear it's very common, especially in lockdown devices, that you need to be fully in control of when and how you update devices. So in this case, you can easily configure that within EDIB to say, I don't want to see any notifications uh, popped up because this is an embedded lockdown device. Um, turn off automatic update uh, so that I can manage the cadence in which I, I run update on myself and disable user access to update, and as well as preventing driver from being installed. These are all policies that, that EDIB will apply at image building time. We have a set of security uh, features that you can customize easily with EDIB. So you see that the templates already selected a number of those, including the defender uh, policies, attack surface reduction rules. You can further apply, for example, the recommended Windows IoT security baseline policies, and that all it takes is a click. EDIB will take care of what needs to happen to install this policy for you. If you're building a device for Edge Secure Core certifications, uh, there is HVC and DRTM um, configurations in the image that you need to take care of, 
or you can let EDIB take care of it for you by just simply clicking on that. Firewall configurations, a very simple uh, starting point to block all inbound connections as a uh, common configurations. Uh, and there's also future plans in EDIB as we are in public preview right now uh, to uh, enable the ability to ingest a exported firewall rules to make that even easier for you to configure. Edge for Linux on Windows. So you can tell EDIB, I need to acquire the latest version from the eFlow release and install it into the image. And I also need to configure it. OEM customizations are all about what you need to bring into the image. So in this case, we have drivers for the, the image to work uh, with the physical components uh, in the devices that you're building. Applications, so either uh, universal Windows apps or unpackaged Win32 apps um, that needs to install through MSI or .exe installers. And you can put in your support information, which will show up on settings about menu. And a convenience place for placing a OEM uh, end user licensing agreement file into the image itself as well. And finally, just to call this out, uh, this page, you know, it's there. It shows it's currently under development, uh, which is one of the next features that we're planning on adding e into EDIB. Uh, this will act as the extension point in which you could bring in additional scripts uh, and collateral that needs to run throughout the various points uh, alongside the image building process that is not otherwise supported by EDIB for configuration. Finally, you can pre-create user accounts, setting it to skip through the out-of-box experience, lock down the experience using Shell Launcher, and then further locking down the experience with unbranded boot, keyboard filter, unified write filter, and custom logon. So that's a quick rundown of the different customizations that EDIB supports. Building is still in progress. We're going to take a look at deploy, and we're going to cheat a little, because this is where typically the image building process is completed. You have that output wing image in your hand, and now you need to take that image onto a physical device for testing purpose. Here, you can customize what happens during deployment, including pre-deployment if you need to configure BitLocker, as well as post-deployment, you know, whether uh, the USB key should automatically reboot after the image is completed uh, deploying. And if it does reboot, where does it need to reboot to? To the out-of-box experience or out demo for additional customizations. And you can specify to, uh, to create Windows Defender application control policies as part of the post-deployment tasks um, that EDIB will configure into the bootable USB key for you. And here you can take an image and plug in a USB key and just click on Create Media. And that's it. EDIB will take the wing image and uh, create format the USB key, and as well as putting all the necessary uh, collaterals into the USB key for it to be able to boot, and as well as the scripts needed for it to drive the deployment process, as well as the post-deployment process customizations that we, we customize here. And that's a quick rundown of EDIB. So here are some resources if you would like to find out more about EDIB, including where to download the current public preview release of the tool, uh, document, full documentation for the tool, as well as a GitHub link for community support, and a public preview announcement blog that goes into a little bit more detail of what uh, we have provided. And with that, thank you very much for attending the on-demand session on Edge Device Image Builder. Thank you.